Hello, I'm uh, George Nahas, interventional cardiologist. Uh, I have been practicing for over 20 years. I do cardiac care. I take care of people with vascular disease and also take care of people with venous disease. Venous disease, as you may know by now, uh, is very common. Patients with varicose veins or patients who have leg pain, ulcers in their legs, pigmentations, discoloration are often ignored in our medical society because we always worry about the arterial side of the circulation, the heart side, but people actually don't pay attention to the venous side that much. I've seen many patients with a lot of swelling in their legs, ulcers, who were told to just uh, wear compression stockings, use some antibiotic creams and live with it. Fortunately, this strategy has changed in our medical community for the past 10 years. We have invented new ways to take care of varicose veins that are very simple, much simpler than what used to happen before with surgery when the veins used to be stripped and patients will be in the hospital for an extended period of time. They will have clots in their legs. They will need blood transfusion. Thank God to office-based procedures. Now we can do everything in the office without even needing to go anywhere else. For example, if patients have varicose vein, we evaluate them, we give them stockings. If they don't respond to stockings after three months or so, then we do ultrasound on their legs. After that, we can plan series of minimally invasive procedures based on their anatomy and based on how extensive the disease is. Some patients may need one procedure, some may need more than one. Uh, it all depends on the case. So let me take you through a little journey about a patient who I'm going to do next. His uh, name is John. I will not say his last name for confidential reasons. He's 62 years old, a retired policeman. He was referred to me by another cardiologist who uh, asked me to take care of his legs. Uh, he has been having ulcers in both legs. Uh, he has been struggling to treat those or heal them. He has pigmentations, he has swelling, discomfort. Uh, when he stands, he has to sit down uh, because of the achiness of his legs. So we did ultrasound on him. He has many veins that are leaking in his legs. And let me just explain that one more time. The mechanism of varicose veins is really leakage in valves inside the veins. And those are usually superficial veins. And when the valve leaks, the blood comes back down with gravity and the veins uh, under high pressure start to balloon up, they start to uh, leak blood and they stain the skin with brown color, the skin become uh, inflamed, sometimes you see eczema, sometimes you see ulcers, and they don't go away. We need to really be careful of uh, telling patients to ignore them because 20% of those patients will have ulcers in their heels that will never heal without uh, some invasive uh, measures. So today we will treat his left leg. We will ablate the left great softiness vein. This is a vein that is the longest vein in the body, starts at the foot and goes all the way to the groin. It's very commonly involved with this process. So we will do something called the radiofrequency ablation procedure. It's a catheter I will insert in his vein around the knee area with ultrasound guidance under local anesthesia and we are going to shut down that vein with radiofrequency energy. So we are in the procedure uh, here uh, with our patient. Um, he is prepped uh, in the office uh, with the sterile techniques and basically we'll do this procedure under local anesthesia. He's fully awake and we didn't give him any sedation or any, uh, he doesn't have IV, he doesn't have to fast for this. And uh, we will do this with ultrasound uh, guidance. As you can see, this is the ultrasound probe. I have the monitor over there showing the vein. Uh, the black circle is actually the vein that we will enter uh, under local anesthesia. So that's the softiness vein. Now we're gonna numb the skin. You're gonna feel a little poke. A little burn, John. Did you eat breakfast? I did not. Well, you're going to have to go somewhere and eat after this, huh? Okay. Drink a lot of fluids, too. Right. Okay, if you feel any uh, significant pain, let me know. Mm -hmm. So now we're entering the vein with the uh, ultrasound. 
you can see the vein is going to dip down like that and this is my needle coming in to bend it you can see the blood coming back in the needle we will put this wire you don't feel any of this okay John okay and <coughs> we will make a tiny 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 nick take needle out and then put the catheter in So now we will insert the radio frequency catheter. So this is the catheter. It's very simple. This is the part that ablates the vein, this uh, copper uh, tip here. And the patient doesn't feel any of this when we insert in the catheter. Take this. So we'll push it until we see it on the monitor uh, by the groin with ultrasound. And as you see, this white line is the catheter. And as you can tell from the uh, procedure, everything is done with ultrasound guidance, so we know exactly where everything is. We don't do it blindly. So we will position the tip of the catheter about three centimeter from the end of the vein where it comes to the deep vein which is seen on the bottom of the screen that uh, white black uh, you see the end there that's the valve point the valve Laura so that's the valve that is broken that we talked about earlier that's the main reason why people have varicose veins that valve is broken is not opening or closing you can see it fixed in place and the blood leaks backward from the big deep vein, the big black uh, circle, the, to the superficial vein. And this is something called tumescent anesthesia. We inject it through a pump. It's basically saline with lidocaine and uh, bicarbonate to take away the acidity of the lidocaine so it doesn't burn as much. And uh, we will start here by injecting the fluid around the vein pushing away the tissue to protect the tissue from the radio frequency heat. You can see that black space forming around the white line. The white line is the catheter and the grayish line around it is the vein, that spasm over the catheter. So now we have a um, protective layer of uh, fluid and lidocaine around this vein. So the, the tip of the needle is in the black space around the vein. So I inject, and you can see how the fluid push away the muscle and the tissue and the skin away from this vein. The goal of this process is to shut down the leaky vein that is causing the high pressure down at the ankle and the ulcers and the swelling and the skin pigmentation. By shutting it down, we're taking the pressure away from the skin, from the vein, from the tissue, and the normal healing process starts after that. And usually those ulcers heal within weeks. Um, and most of all, best of all is that they uh, usually don't come back. Sometimes they do after many years, we have to visit them again and see what else is leaking and treat it. Because, you know, varicose veins is a genetic disorder, meaning um, the patients who have them are always going to be predisposed to having them and they come back sometimes and we have to deal with the uh, new branches that come back. Now we're done with the numbing process which we call tumescent anesthesia and the final step is to ablate the vein to close it. So my assistant is going to push what the tip is, push it down to achieve better contact with the vein. I'm going to push this button here, and the machine behind me is delivering the energy. We do two ablation uh, treatment for the first part of the vein. And the machine behind me heats the vein to 120 degrees. So 
each segment will get 120 degree heating up to uh, 20 seconds. It's timed by the manufacturer, 20 seconds for each segment. This cutter is very simple. It uh, has markers to mark how long uh, the segment is so you don't miss any part of the vein. And I'm going to pull the sheath back one time and we'll do a final, uh, final segment. You can see when you see those markers, this is a sign that this is the last segment that we can ablate before we go in the, inside the sheath. This is the sheath, this is the catheter. Okay, and we're done. This is where we entered, a very small, tiny hole. There's no need to stitch it. Just a little compression with the finger was enough to stop any bleeding. Those are pokes with a needle to deliver the temescent anesthesia or the lidocaine. And that's all what you see. And we're going to clean his leg. We're going to put the stockings. And he's going to be going home. So now we are done with the procedure. We will put the stocking on him while he's still laying down. It will be thigh high for two weeks. He will wear it day and night except to shower. First time you can shower, John, is two days from now. You can take a bath without wetting the stockings of the left leg. Okay, after two weeks, you can use stockings up to the knees, not necessarily up to the thigh. I will ask him to also use Motrin 400 milligram every eight hours to thin the blood, to achieve some pain control, which is very minimal, and to decrease inflammation. John, I'm going to ask you to walk a lot when you're awake. Uh, every hour or so, walk for 5-10 minutes. Avoid long sitting, long laying down, and especially today and tomorrow. Okay. All right? So activity is very important. Avoid lifting that makes you grunt or hold your breath. Okay. If you see any bleeding outside the stocking, call us right away. Okay. I have not had any patient bleed on me, but there's always a first. Okay. You will see some spots on the stockings where we poked uh, to give you the numbing. That's normal. You see some staining of uh, blood-tinged uh, fluid because we injected lidocaine under the skin. It will start to ooze out slowly in the next few hours. Okay. Your thigh area will be numb for a few hours, just like lidocaine does uh, usually when you go to a dentist. Mm -hmm. It goes away in a couple hours. Mm -hmm.